After logging in, we will need to select from the drop down menus on the screen. The first place that we would want to go and to make sure all of our stages are first of all listed and then connected properly is under system and then auto configuration. We click on system and then auto configuration. In this table, we will be seeing all the plugs that the controller has. Plug numbers one through eight, and also the driver models included with the stage models. As you can see, the plug number is basically the number of the plug that your stage is connected to. For instance, on plug number one, as you can see, we have XPS-DRV02, which is necessary for XMS160 model. If a stage is not connected to the correct driver card, although it would be shown on the table, it will not operate. After verifying that all of the stages and the driver cards are on the system ultra configuration table, you would click on generate configuration files. And what will happen after this is that your controller is going to reboot. And before that, it will generate all the files necessary for the controller to operate. We click on that and a pop-up window will tell you that the controller is rebooting. Now that we have homed and initialized our stages and made sure that we have proper communication, I would like to introduce some of the features of the front panel of the XPS web GUI to you. First thing that I would need to draw your attention to is the documentation that exists on the XPS front panel. All the documentation that XPS has is provided to you on the hard disk that this controller has. Menus of the XPS controller consist of two types of menus. We have the menus which are typed in capital letters such as system, stage, controller configuration, front panel, terminal tuning, and documentation. And also, there are the sub-menus, which appear on the second line of the black area, which such as under system, we have ultra configuration, manual configuration. Under stage, we have add from database, add custom stage, and modify, and so on and so forth. What I will do here is I will be Go into every individual menu and say what each menu would do for you. Move table will make it possible for you to move the stages as we have demonstrated earlier in this video. In the jog table, you will be able to jog each stage with the velocity that you define. Spindle could be used for the rotary stages when you define them as spindle stages. I.O. view could be used to look at the inputs and the outputs of the controller through the GPIO, General Purpose Input Output Connectors. You can see that different pins have different values to them and you can set each one of them to one if necessary for the TTL output. I.O. set is exactly where you can set these I.O.s to zero or to one. Positioner error will provide you with a table of the positioners that you have or the stages and they'll provide you with what kind of error you might be seeing on the stages. We hope that this quick start video guide was useful and please don't hesitate to contact us with feedback on how we can improve our products and services. You can find additional product reference information on our website at www.newport.com and thank you.